Hi guys, it's Nancy and we are going to do some really easy foiling with products from Catherine Pooler. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you guys some really simple techniques to, um, you can purchase all these products from Catherine Pooler and then you can make some beautiful foil work. So um, the first thing is Deco Foil Transfer Gel Duo. What's nice about this gel is you can use this hot or cold. I will show you both applications of that. Catherine Puller is now carrying foil. This is the beautiful deco foil that is holographic. You get five sheets in here. This one is called Glass Slipper, and it is a light blue holographic um, color, so I'll show you that. I did already use a stencil. Here is some foiling that I've already done over a previous stencil. This is the Swoop stencil. I'm also going to show you how to use the deco foil toner sheets with die cuts. All right. So the first thing I'm going to start with is the Deco Foil Duo Gel. Now I did prepare this ahead of time to save you some time. I have some heavy duty cardstock here. This is, I believe, Accent Opaque, 120 pound cardstock. I like my cardstock to be heavy when I'm doing this. And all I did is you can take any stencil, but I do love the Catherine Puller stencils. She has some neat designs and not like everywhere else. This one's called Square Dance and this one was called Swoop. I believe it's called Swoop. Okay, so what I did is a few days ago, I took this heavy duty cardstock, put my stencil down, took out the Deco Foil Transfer Gel Duo. Again, Duo is the one that you want to buy. And you just take your palette knife, your spatula, and you're going to run that through your stencil. You don't really need to use any pixie spray. I prefer not to use pixie spray when I'm doing foiling because I don't want to take the chance of my foil sticking to where the pixie spray is. It's very important that you let this dry for at least 24 hours. Once it dries, so it goes down in a white consistency, it looks and smells like glue. And when it dries, it dries completely clear. You can do this on any color paper. So you can do it on white paper, red paper, black paper. Um, you can do it um, on acetate. You could do it on vellum, any paper that you have. Of course, you want to clean your stencil up right away. So I did it with the Swoop and the Square Dance stencils. And then once it's dry, going to cut down your panel to whatever size you want to use. I almost cut that too short. All right, so let's do So I'm going to show you guys the method with heat and the method without heat. I'm cutting this down to five and a half by four and a quarter. You do get some neat texture out of this as well. Okay, so we're going to do one piece with heat and one piece without heat. So for the piece with heat, you want to use a mink or a laminator machine. For my mink, I have it heating up on setting number three. Um, once the light goes from blinking to solid green, you know that it's ready to go. If you're going to use a laminator, you want to let your laminator heat up for a minimum of 30 minutes. Okay. All right. So be careful because these sheets do tend to static and stick together and you think you have one sheet and in reality you have two sheets stuck together. But look at how pretty this blue holographic is. And then I'm going to measure this out to be slightly larger than my panel. Not too much. And then you can use a rotary cutter or scissors to cut this down. This will work with any toner or mink foil, but I do like these holographic colors that Catherine Puller is now carrying. And again, you can use any of her stencils. 
the deco foil duo gel and any of the foils that she's carrying in her shop you want to make sure that your foils stay protected okay and then an optional step that you can do which will help you with your foiling is to dusty dusty you're going to dust where your um panel has the duo gel which is now completely dry it's been drying for at least 24 hours and then the back side of the foil and then we want to cover our panel with the foil and then for the mink you should use a carrier sheet you're just going to lay that into your carrier sheet smooth it out and we are going to feed this into our mini mink now my mini mink does look differently because i put protect uh colored um transfer vinyl on there I've had this mink for a very long time, but it works great. And then for the other method, we're going to do the dry method or the cool method without using any heat. Again, we're going to take this as a little extra piece of the stencil. Going to cut a little piece of our foil to go over. Again, roll our foils up and put them back in the jar. Now, once our stencil or our foil piece has come out of the mink or your laminator, and again, you want to have your laminator on the highest heat you can put it on. Not all laminators are the same, and you want to let it heat up for a minimum of 30 minutes. The advantage to using a mink is a mink gets hotter, and a mink has two rollers inside, which give you pressure, and you do um, the pressure and the heat do make it a little easier. So while we're waiting for that to cool down before we reveal it, we're going to use my Gemini Junior die cutting machine, and we're going to put this through the sandwich. So I have my cutting plate. I have my foil. I'm going to dusty, dusty the back side. I'm going to dusty, dusty my um, deco foil transfer gel paste side. Put that on there. Put my magnetic shim, my milky shim, and my top plate, just like if I were doing die cutting. And I'm going to run this through my Gemini Junior. Now, because the Duo Gel does not require heat, it just requires pressure. Um, if you don't want to invest in any fancy machines, any die cutting machine will work. So if you have a manual die cutting machine, that will work as well. And let me reveal and show you guys the difference between using heat and not using heat. So here is the manual one. You can also burnish this with your bone folder as well. You can use double-sided tape. Um, anything that will help remove the foil. So we're going to reveal this. And you can see we have this fun texture from the stencil, from the paste, and now the foiling is on there. It's never going to be perfect because there's going to be highs and lows and dips because of the paste as it dries. But you want to make sure it's 100% dry. If you try to foil this and it's not completely dry, the foil will just, or the um, paste will just squish out and you'll get a blob. So you do want to make sure that it is completely dry. Now, once you, once you put the paste down, there's no expiration date that I know of to foil it. But remember that it does stay a little bit tacky. So I wouldn't prepare too many of these more than I would say a week ahead of time because as you leave it out, it's still slightly tacky and anything you stick to it, it could stick. Um, you could collect dust and particles and things like that. So I would say within a week's time, you want to make sure that you foil these um, stenciled through the, with the paste stenciled through. Okay, so really pretty. And then this is the full one we did with the mink machine. And I prefer the heat because the heat does tend to smooth out the foil, the gel. So if you can see right here, see how incredibly smooth that is. So obviously, again, there's highs and lows in the paste. But right here, you can see how super smooth that is. So as it goes through the heating process, it just kind of smooths it out. But still, very fun. And oh, look at all those rainbow colors in there. 
all right so you can see with duo gel using heat using it without heat all different colors of foils are available in her shop all right the other way that I wanted to show you you could foil with Catherine Pooler products is by using her dies. So she is so many wonderful designs with her dies. I love her word dies. So I wanted to show you guys the two ways, or actually it's one way of foiling. Move this out of the way with the dies. So you can purchase deco foil toner sheets in her shop. Um, these happen to be the peel and stick sheets, which have adhesive on the back. There's two full eight and a half by 11 sheets in here. If you want the non sticky kind, you actually get three sheets and you can just glue those down. So I'm just going to take a piece of this. Now I always recommend if you're going to do die cutting foil first, die cut second, but I will show you guys both ways on why I say foil first, die cut second. So this is her Hello die. And again, I want to cut my toner sheet so that it is the proper size. So slightly smaller than two inches. So I always recommend foiling first, die cut second. And I'm going to show you exactly why here. Because when you die cut, it presses into the toner sheet. And when it presses into the toner sheet, when you go to foil it, you don't get even foiling. So if you foil first and then die cut, you get a little bit better chance of getting even foiling. And I'll show you what I mean. And again, this is very, very important to do dusty, dusty. If you don't do dusty, dusty, you're going to get black spots. You can pick up these dusty, dusty brushes in my Amazon shop. I will link them down below. So the first one, I am going to dusty, dusty, and I'm going to die cut this. So we're going to run this through my Gemini Junior and die cut it. I don't want to use any kind of adhesive or tape because I don't want that to affect how my die cutting is going to work or my foiling is going to work. So I'm simply going to die cut this, do my sandwich. Uh, hopefully that doesn't move too much. Carefully want to release this from the die. I did try this with the foam, the double sided foam, it was just too thick and it just didn't want to work out. So I always recommend the toner sheets, they're just easier to use. All right, so once I get this released, I want to be very careful with poking through here because I don't want to scratch any of that toner off. So I want to be very careful. Okay, so now this is removed. I'm going to bring in our carrier sheet. And I'm going to foil both of these at the same time. And, it, and I'll show you the difference here. So the first one is the full sheet. And then the second one is just the word die. I'm going to cut this little strip of extra foil off. So I'm going to put my full size toner sheet down. I'm going to put my Hello die cut down and you're gonna see the difference here in foiling. Always dusty, dusty. Try to keep your fingerprints to a minimum if you can. Always dusty, dusty. Do not use an embossing buddy or an embossing bag near your foiling. That will only cause black spots. Dust is the enemy. So you wanna keep this really smooth just using a soft makeup brush. 
if you got any pets or if you were doing any kind of heat embossing or glitter projects earlier. And then you wanna put the ugly side down, color side up. What we want is for this to stick to the toner and the color side will be revealed. And we're gonna close our carrier sheet. And the folded side of the carrier sheet goes into your laminator, or sorry, your mink machine. If you're using a laminator, you wanna use a folded piece of copy paper that will work just fine or a uh, folded piece of parchment paper will also work fine. Just remember, dust is the enemy. So the science behind this is toner is basically pulverized pieces of plastic. So when this goes through your laser printer, and you can also print from home, those pulverized pieces of plastic basically heat up and stick to the paper. When we use foiling, the foil sticks to that, and once it cools down, we always want to let it cool down before we reveal it, the foil remains behind, the carrier sheet comes off. So you always want to keep these protected from dust. Using a soft makeup brush will definitely help keep all of that dust off of there. And as, like I said, a mink machine is specially created for foiling so that you get much hotter heat and that you get pressure, which is going to give you better foiling results. So this is cool. I'm going to reveal the die cut one first. And you're gonna say, oh, that looks okay. And it does look okay, but I want you guys to notice that where it was pressed into the die, so here on the H and the Ls, and everywhere where there's a little divot where the die comes out, those are not completely foiled. So yeah, it looks okay, but we want it to be completely foiled because it's really difficult to fix that. So that's why I always recommend foiling first and die cutting second. Now, before I reveal this foil, I want to die cut it. Certainly, you can pull that foil off of there, but there's a protective, this is a protective uh, layer on top. So before I do that, I'm gonna run this piece through my die cutting machine. So now when I reveal it, I'll show you guys. When we pull the top sheet off, that's the carrier sheet. You can see how solid that has foiled. It's beautiful. But let's see the die. Again, I do want to be careful with poking out my little pieces. Even though there's a protective layer on there, still want to be careful. Foil is delicate, does scratch pretty easily. That's why I recommend leaving that clear plastic sheet over top. And again, as we poke through here, it's going to release the die. And as it releases the die, we do have that clear protective layer on top and you're slowly gonna try to bind it and peel it off. If it wants to come off. There we go. Got a little corner of it. I want to be careful. I'm trying not to scratch my foil as I find that and release it. So this clear piece is what we basically call the transfer sheet. Okay, there we go. I got it. Of course, you could leave it on there if you wanted to. No one's really going to know. Oh, I probably should have left it on. All right, my sticker's coming unstuck. All right, so I should have left a transfer sheet on. It took all the foil with it, I think because this is the sticker paper. But you can see that the foiling is more even. Now it lifted up where the transfer sheet lifted up. 
but you don't have any black spots on here. So when I go to use this sticker now, because you can see it's a sticker, it's double-sided, we're going to have that foil is even all over it versus having these black spots of foil. I would recommend leaving that transfer sheet off of, on here because it did pull up around the edges on there. But either way works fine, but leaving, leaving the full die on there before foiling, before die cutting it does tend to come out better than die cutting it and then foil it. So foil first, die cut second. But they're both beautiful. They both can be used. And again, these have adhesive built on the back, so it's already sticker paper. So hopefully you guys found something useful in today's video and you can certainly use your dies and use your stencils to foil with and it's very easy. If you don't have a mink machine, an inexpensive laminator will work with both of these techniques. Again, you can pick up the Transfer Gel Duo, the Deco Foil, your dies and your stencils from Catherine Puller. I will link them down below for you. If you're not part of the Foiling Snobs Club, I do invite you to join us and show us your creations. We do all of things stamping, foiling, just having fun with general crafting and card making. We love Catherine Puller and all of her supplies. Come check us out, Foiling Snobs Club on Facebook. If you have any questions, post them down below. I'll definitely help you out. Um, if you uh, have any questions about where I got the products, I'll link those down below for you. If you've enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about stamping, don't forget to give it a thumbs up on your way out. Thanks for watching, guys, and keep on foiling. Bye-bye.